Hi, I'm John Landells for SnapLogic, and in this video, I'm going to give you a high-level overview of what it's like to build a simple integration pipeline using SnapLogic. What we've been asked to do is to build an integration that reads a customer list from a SQL Server table and uploads that into Snowflake. And then as a follow-on from that, we're going to enhance the pipeline to strip out any educational customers and write that instead to an Excel spreadsheet. So let's start with the simple SQL Server to Snowflake pipeline. Here we are in the SnapLogic designer. As we can see on the left hand side, we have a few options here. We can um, access any APIs that we've imported. We can access patterns here. And you can think of patterns just like a template in Microsoft Office. We can access our existing pipelines. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a snap. I'm going to scroll down. You can see all of my snap packs here. I'm going to scroll down in this case to SQL Server. And I'm going to do a SQL Server select. So you can see all I've done is I've dragged it onto the canvas and it's prompting me straight away for an account. I can choose from a list of predefined accounts or I can create a new one. This feature is very useful because um, it allows people to define an account once and if those credentials change, they only have to update it once and it will get picked up everywhere that that account is being used. It's even more useful if you're using a service account across an entire team, for example. Now that I've specified my account, I can actually query the database to see what schemas are available using my credentials. I'll select this one. I can then query what tables are available within that schema. And I'll choose this one. And for today, that's all we need to fill out. And you can see at the top of the screen here that uh, we were validating, the cog was spinning. And now the snap has gone green. That tells me it can access the database. And because it's a read snap, it's um, actually going to provide me with a sample of data. Okay, so we can see this is what we're getting from the database. We also see on here that we have another snap has, that's appeared, but kind of grayed out. This is using our Iris AI technology to suggest what snaps um, we might want to use after a SQL Server select. And it bases this on um, what other pipelines within our organization are actually using. And I can see here the top five. I can either select them down the bottom here or I can use my mouse wheel just to scroll over and select the one that I want. The next snap that I want isn't available, so I'm going to go and search for it in here. We have a Snowflake insert. Once again, it's asking me for my account. I'm going to select my schema. which is here, and then select my table name. We'll take this one here. Now, this is validating again, and we can see we've got a problem with the mapper. And that's quite simply, we haven't mapped any data yet. But what we see, because we've gone through the validation, is um, we use a technology called Schema on Read, we can see the input schema that's available, which is coming from my SQL Server. We can see the target schema in Snowflake. What I'm going to do is just drag in my target schema, and then we'll manually map this. We can use an auto link. An auto link can be really useful if you've got maybe hundreds and, or at least dozens of, of uh, columns in your database. But when we've just got a handful, it's just as quick to do this manually. So I'm going to map company to company email to email, name, interestingly I only have first name and last name, so we'll come back to that, phone I'm going to map across, and timestamp doesn't actually exist in my input schema. So we have a couple here we need to think about. Now, looking at this, 
name is actually just first name, last name with a space between them. So we can use very simple JavaScript here to take the first name, add a space, and then add the last name. If I click in here, we'll get a preview of this data and you can see it's done exactly what we'd expect. Now for the timestamp, I really have nothing to work with here, but as I say, it's simple JavaScript. But my JavaScript a little rusty. I can't remember exactly what I need to type in here. So instead of trying to just select something, I'm going to go and look at our expression builder. And I'm going to scroll down until I find date functions. And I have this date now, which sounds pretty promising. So if I click, click on that, we should see in the value previews that we're getting a date and timestamp, which is pretty much what we're looking for. Okay, I can save this. And what we'll see when this is validated is that we've got that subset uh, of the columns that we were looking for and our timestamp. Before I execute this though, do you remember I said we had that second requirement to split out the educational customers? If we look again, at what we've got here, and I'm going to look at it in JSON format just so we can see the emails a bit easier. If we look down this list, we'll start seeing a few that end in .edu, which is a pretty good indication that it's an educational customer. So we're going to use that and we're going to make a decision based on that. So what I'm going to do is make a space in here and then we're going to have a look in our flow snap pack where we have various options to control how we potentially um, divert, how we make decisions, one of which is a router. Within this router, I'm going to rename my outputs so that I've got a regular customer and education. Okay, let's just take a moment to see what that looks like on the canvas. See, if I hover over, we can see which way that decision would go. But at the moment, we haven't actually done any tests to determine which is which. So, again, I'm going to use my expression builder because I'm a little bit rusty. I know I want to use my email. But I want to filter this. So I want to know that it ends with, see here, .edu. If I select that, and in brackets, I just put .edu. What we'll see if we look at the output preview, is most of them are false, but we start seeing the odd true in here. So this looks like we could be onto a winner. Now, if it's an educational customer, though, I want that to go to the education output. And I want everybody else to go to regular customer. Now, the way a router works is it will potentially pass the data to, to any line where there's a match. And we don't want this. We want it to stop at the first match. Okay, so if it's an educational customer, we pass it to education. What that means is anything else that gets here, we want it to match. So we just put true in there. Okay, so we'll let this validate again. Let's have a look at this. Again, I'm going to look at this in JSON format. And it does look like we're getting EDUs here. So that's pretty good. But if I go back to the table, we've got this timestamp, and I don't really want that in my Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to use another mapper. If I drag this on here, I'm going to name this remove timestamp, so it's obvious what's happening. And then I'm going to say pass through. And what pass through means is anything we receive at the input, we send to the output. But I don't want the timestamp. So if I just map the timestamp to nothing, what that effectively does is it just deletes that field for me. You can have a look at this. Let it validate once more. 
and there we go phone email name and company name so all we need to do now is write that to Excel so we want an Excel formatter give it a name And once again, I'm going to take the iris suggestion of a file writer because we want to write it to an Excel file. That's all there is to it. So this is ready to go now. I can execute it. And what we'll do is we'll monitor the execution using this icon here. Okay, it's started. We've got 1,616 rows in the SQL database. 255 of those rows are educational. So that is leaving 1,361 that we're writing into Snowflake. Okay, and to validate this, I can go and have a look at the files here in my manager. And if I just expand these out, and I'll make it a little larger for the video, you can see that these are definitely all our education customers. And you can see the worksheet is also named education customers as we expected. Now, once we have our working pipeline, this might be something that we want to run every day so that we get an up-to-date list in Snowflake and an up-to-date Excel spreadsheet. So I could schedule this to run on a daily basis. I choose my time zone. I choose my start time. And I'm going to say run it every day at 5 p.m. That would be one approach I could take here. Another thing that I can very quickly do is I can create what's called a triggered task. And if I create a triggered task, if we go back to our manager, what you'll see is we've actually here got a URL that can be called to make a REST API call to trigger that specific pipeline. And all of this has been done without having to write a single line of code. Once again, I'm John Landells for SnapLogic, and I hope you've enjoyed this video.